In this video, I'd like to continue talking about the Sierpinski carpet. And remember that this shape is formed by taking a square and then dividing the square into nine smaller size squares and removing the middle one. And then for each of those eight remaining squares, the process will be continued. We will split each of those into nine smaller squares. And again, the middle of those squares will be removed. And for each of these remaining tinier squares, that process will continue, split it into nine smaller squares and remove the middle. And the question is, what is the dimension of this Sierpinski carpet? What is the fractal dimension? And to figure that out, we need to remember the equation that was derived in a previous video relating the scale factor, essentially what we are scaling each of the smaller shapes by as we go from step to step, the number of new pieces that are created, and the dimension of the object. So let's just go through each of those variables. We will redefine them and then come up with our equation for that relating each of those three ideas. We have one over R, which we call the scaling factor. And in this case, since we are taking this big square and cutting it into nine smaller pieces and then having the middle one removed, we are scaling each of the original side lengths by one third. They are now one third of what they used to be. And that's true for both of these sides. And we have another variable, which we call n. This is the number of essentially new pieces that are created after each step of this process. And as you can see, we can take this overall square, split it into nine equally sized smaller pieces, and then remove the middle one. And in this case, the number of new pieces we would have, the ones in black here, would be eight. So our scaling factor is one third, the number of pieces we have is eight, and we'll have a third variable, which we call D, that is our dimension. And the equation relating these three ideas is that R, the denominator of the scaling factor, when you raise it to the dimension is equal to the number of pieces. And if you have not seen the video where this equation was derived, which is called fractal dimension, then I highly recommend watching that first. But once you understand where this equation comes from, it does make a lot of sense. And you can test this equation by taking a square and scaling it by whatever you want, let's say by one half on each of the sides, and you'd see that we end up with four new pieces. So R in this case would be two, we know the dimension of a square is two and the number of new pieces is four. So you can see that the equation does make sense and this is generally valid for self similar objects. Now for this fractal here, this Sierpinski carpet, we know that our scaling factor one over R is one third in this case, meaning that R is equal to three the number of pieces that are created from one step to the next would be eight. For each of these squares, we end up with eight smaller squares. And that means that n is equal to eight, which means if we plug these into the equation, we get three raised to the dimension d is equal to eight. And we just need to ask three raised to what power gives us eight? And the best way to solve this would be to rewrite it as a logarithm. Remember that logarithms and exponential equations are equivalent. We have log base three, since the logarithm and the exponential equation each have the same base. And logarithms are exponents, so the logarithm is equal to d, and the input of the logarithm is what the exponential equation is equal to, which is eight in this case. So we have log base three of eight is equal to D. And again, this 
is really just reframing the question, but these are equivalent. We're still asking three raised to what power gives us eight, and the answer to that is this exponent d. Now, once we have this as a logarithm, we can rewrite it using the change of base rule so that we can actually evaluate this with a calculator. Let me just make a little bit more room. And we can use base 10 or base e. And if we use logarithms with base 10, then we're using the common log and we don't have to write 10, it's implied, which means we have log eight over log three, or we can rewrite this with a natural log with base e, we can do ln, the natural log of eight, divided by ln of three, but in both cases, these are equivalent. And when we plug this into our calculator, we could find that d is equal to 1.8927, and this will go on forever since this is an irrational number. But if we raise three to this, exponent here, we will get eight. And in the next video, we will look at how to calculate the area of this Sierpinski carpet, which we will show is equal to zero.